fourth is tazkiyah, that is purification and growth. And last is accountability, that we have to believe in the hereafter. And we will be accountable on the day of judgment. Islamic banking is mainly based on these five principles. When you have to do business, normally there are two types of unit. One is the surplus unit which has got excess of money but does not know how to utilize it. The other is the deficit unit. That is those people who have got no money but have got very good ideas. The best example in Islamic history I can give you of a surplus and a deficit unit is the Hazrat Khatija, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. She is a very good example of a surplus unit. She had excess of wealth. But since she was a lady, but naturally she could not go abroad and involve too much in the business transaction. She did not have avenues to invest her money. And the example of the deficit unit is our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. That is deficit in the terms of money. He did not have much wealth, but he had a lot of ideas. So both these units combined, the surplus and the deficit unit. Bibi Khatija, may Allah be pleased with her, she gave her money to Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, to do business. And whatever Prophet they obtained, it was shared on the ratio that was predetermined. The best example you have in Islamic history of a deficit and a surplus unit. Let's analyze the system of modern banking and Islamic banking. Let's first analyze the options open for an individual to deposit the money in an Islamic bank. The first type of account you have for deposit account is the current account. It is called as Vadia Infiq. That you deposit your money in the Islamic bank, in the current account. That money which the Islamic bank takes, it utilizes that money with your permission. You give permission to the bank to utilize that money. But if the bank goes in loss, the loss is not shared by the depositor. If the bank goes in profit, neither is the profit shared by the depositor. The depositor only keeps the money for safety. It's called as amana. He keeps his wealth for safety. He is not interested in profit, neither in loss. He keeps his money for safety. And Islamic Sharia gives the permission that you are allowed to keep your money as a manat with anyone and you can utilize it. At the same time, the Islamic bank gives you a check and a slip book. But naturally with the check book, you can withdraw money whenever you want. And with the slip book, you can put in money whenever you want, similar to the modern bank. Coming to the second type of deposit account. It is a savings account. In the savings account, here also, the depositor is mainly interested in the safety of his money. He is not interested in profit and loss. And whatever profit the bank obtains from that money, the depositor does not mind accepting a part of it. The Sharia says, whatever profit you obtain from a business, you have a right to give a part of it as gift a part of it as gift to anyone. It's called a satka. You can give a satka. So here you deposit your money in the Islamic bank and whatever profit the bank makes, the bank gives you a portion of the profit. But you cannot demand a fixed amount of profit. It's not allowed in Islam. Whatever the bank gives, you have to accept it. And the remaining profit, it's considered as you have given it back to the bank. You have a right to give back a profit to whoever you wish, according to the Islamic Sharia. So these two accounts, the current account and the savings account, the depositors are mainly interested in the safety of the money. They aren't interested in profit. The other type of account that you have 
are the investment accounts or in the modern banks they are similar to the fixed deposit account and this are further divided into several types in the islamic system in the islamic banking system you have the mudariba which means profit and loss sharing that the person the depositor keeps keeps an amount for a fixed period of time the period of time may be multiples of 3 months it can be 3 months it can be 6 months it can be 9 months it can be 12 months this example i'm giving you of the islamic banking is based on the islamic banking in malaysia the best banking that you have today the islamic banking you have today in the world is the malaysian banking there is no better islamic banking anywhere in the world than the islamic banking followed in malaysia in the other countries they partly follow islamic banking partly they don't but the 100% system which i have in my knowledge the only country which is following 100% to the minutest detail is in malaysia so this concept i'm telling you is based on the islamic system of banking in malaysia in this investment account that's called a mudariba you keep a fixed amount of wealth for a fixed period maybe for 3 months for 6 months 9 months 12 months or whatever it is multiples of 3 months some banks keep it for multiples of 4 months this money in turn is used by the bank to do business with the businessman so in the terminology when you deposit your money in the bank the depositor is called as sahib e mal and the bank is called as sahib e amal here the surplus unit is the depositor the deficit unit is the islamic bank now whatever profit the islamic bank makes it is shared on a predetermined ratio the profit which the islamic bank makes or the money you have deposited for the fixed period is shared on the ratio which is determined in the islamic banking of malaysia the ratio is 7 part to 3 part 7 parts of the profit is given to the depositor 3 part of the profit is is kept with the bank means 70% of the profit goes to the depositor and 30% the islamic bank keeps for itself for example if you deposit 1000 rupees in the islamic bank of malaysia for one year and the bank makes a profit of 100 rupees so bank will give you 70 rupees of the profit and will keep 30 rupees of the profit but natural the capital also you get back but the profit you get 70% 70 rupees and the bank will give 30 rupees if the bank makes a profit of 500 rupees the bank keep 30% of 500 rupees that is 150 rupees and give you 70% of the profit that is give you 350 rupees so bigger the profit bigger is the share of of the depositor as well as the bank less as the profit less as the share of the depositor as well as the bank it is profit sharing if the profit is 0 rupees the bank gets 0 the depositor gets 0 but suppose in case the bank goes in loss according to the mudariba system the loss is borne only by the depositor the loss in the business is theoretically only borne by the depositor means for example if you invest 1000 rupees and keep it for one year there is a loss of 100 rupees so you in turn the loss is transferred to you and from your capital out of the 1000 rupees you only get 900 rupees back 100 rupees is deducted as loss <coughs> so in theoretical terms the loss is only borne by the depositor but practically even the islamic bank is going in loss 